The Global Value Chains event brought together international academics, practitioners and campaigners to share research into the impact of supply chains on workers and other stakeholders from an increasing number of business and service sectors across the globe and at a time when the economic crisis is reshaping operations. Clearly, when you think about global value chains, the most immediate areas we think about are garments, textiles and agri-food, because that's mostly what we hear about. But there are other important global value chains that you've got to focus on. We've had papers here today on construction. We've had uh, papers uh, highlighting low-cost airlines. There are a whole raft of areas that we engage in as consumers uh, that are impacted by the research that we're doing. The low fares airlines and management of low fares airlines can abdicate all kinds, all responsibility for what ground handling service providers do. Value chains in the economy airline industry and the working conditions for those in seasonally affected work has revealed some of the real cost of a cheap airline ticket. The low fares airlines are far more subject to seasonal variation. In order to deal with that, they need um, far more temporary labour, uh, so they have far more part-time contracts, um, staff with, with precarious employment. There's the broader issue of, of having the anti-social consequences. People who are employed in these airlines, um, because of the precarious nature of their work, um, they struggle with things like mortgages. We find uh, a lot of young members of staff who will simply work for these airlines for a, for a short period of time. People need to be made aware of, of the real cost of, of low fares transport. It just seems that wherever you look these days, um, the idea of like full-time jobs, permanent jobs, seems to be disappearing. You're just getting these layers and layers of outsourcing and um, you know, very precarious work. And you know, obviously from a union organising perspective, it's much more difficult to organise workers that they are scared about their jobs. So that's a kind of potential stumbling block right there. It is exactly 10 years since the first UK call centres were migrated or all relocated to India. It's incredible, isn't it? That's the Global Value Chains workshop at Birmingham Business School also heard a research paper on the repatriation of call centres. The UK now has many more than double the number of call centre workers than India. It's clear in some cases the threat to offshoring was used to dampen down employees' wage rises, expectations and so on. I think what this current phase can do, should do, is give some degree of confidence to workers who might have lost some conditions over the past years that they should be regained in their, in their, uh, their values, their skills, their commitment should be rewarded. The plight of garment workers whose working conditions have long been recognised by global value chains researchers was in sharp focus again during the workshop with the news that many garment workers had died in a collapsed factory in Bangladesh. I think as long as the rule of the games remain that uh, these big buyers can uh, uh, push, uh, promote competition between any location in the world and any factory, uh, there's not going to be a way to uh, make significant improvement. So I think we've come, in my opinion, to a point where we really need to question this dogma of uh, a big world market that doesn't allow for people to uh, make a sustainable uh, life and or for suppliers to be sustainable either. I think the main thing is employee vulnerability, worker vulnerability, through various forms of insecurity, various forms of disenfranchisement. And um, for me, the key thing is that if workers can collectively organise and represent themselves, then they are the best police men or women of their rights and um, if they have not only the right on a statute book to organize but they are allowed to freely organize and firms don't put such concerted effort into blocking that collective organization which happens which they do um, then i think you know, the, the value chain should be a much healthier environment for workers to live in. A lot of the ideas that come out of the academic work is extremely helpful to us. Um, and then we try to apply that in practice when we're engaging with companies. There is a need for this to be backed up by more regulation. And what that could look like, I'm not quite sure, because it's a failure of reg regulation in developing countries, which has meant that codes have been needed. But I think, for instance, my personal view is that if the EU could have a, some exploitation tax or something um, that enabled a, a level playing field, so you couldn't say it was a, it was a cartel, but it, it, it rewarded companies that pay a living wage or provide better 
security of, of, of jobs, then I think you could uh, complement voluntary approaches with regulation, a new form of regulation. You don't know when you see somebody working uh, in a shop or in a factory, you don't know uh, who is the employer of this person, because it can be a temporary agency, it can be a supplier, uh, so things are becoming much more fluid and this also means that uh, a lot of regulation that is in, res in, in place to protect workers, it, it's not so effective anymore. The global value chain has expanded within the last year or so within the business school. We are now better positioned to deal with an increased number of topics, including trade or, for example, value chains in services. And this has made us stronger than, than ever. So I think this uh, workshop is um, showing that we are gaining momentum, we are maintaining the momentum, and we are very committed to this topic. And the business school is committed to us and to make sure that this topic is one of the core resources research themes uh, within the business school.